Today my 1974 Porsche LE gets eyes, or at least pop-up headlights anyway. I'll show you how to test the headlight motor, restore the buckets, put them in the car, and install LED bulbs. Let's get started. Okay, so here's everything we're going to need to restore the headlights on the Bumblebee. We have the motor here, of course, and this is the push rod and the clip that holds the push rod in and this uh, circular thing over here holds the motor to the car itself with some screws. This is one of the pivots, the inside pivot actually, and the outside pivot is over here. We're also going to change the bushings that go on the pivots themselves. This is the actual headlight bucket. Here's the rubber cover that protects the part of the motor that sticks through the tray there. And we have the bronze pivot which goes onto the headlight bucket and into the actuating push rod. Over here we have the plates that hold the headlight bucket to the car and the new stainless steel headlight adjuster screws. These headlight motors can be almost 50 years old, so how do you know they work? So you see here we have three wires going into the junction here, red, gray, and green. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply power to the red one and then either the gray or the green. The gray one makes the headlights go down and the green one causes the motor to turn the headlights up. So to test it, we have to put power on the red and then either the green or the gray. And then also, of course, some ground to the brown wire here. Next thing I wanna do is make sure I have a known good relay because the motor needs a relay to actually work and I don't wanna be chasing whether or not it's the relay that's bad or the motor that's bad. So we'll take the negative lead from my power supply and put that on the brown wire. And for the positive side, I've twisted the two wires together, going to the red and either the gray or the green, and hooked that up to the power supply. Okay, so now let's give it some juice. Nothing has happened, okay? But that doesn't mean that the motor is bad. It could just mean that the motor is already in the down position and I'm powering the gray wire, which is for down, so the motor doesn't think it's got to do anything. So what I'll do is just switch it up a little bit and move the wire over to the green side, and let's see if this works. Yep, now that worked. So the motor was in the down position before, definitely works, and this motor is good. Now I'll just disassemble the motor and clean nearly 50 years of crud off it so it looks good. Before I start putting things on the car, this is one of the brackets here and I want to replace the bushing on the bench. So I'll take the old one off just using a plier. I'm not looking to save this. And then we'll take the new one from 914 rubber and just push it right onto the pivot. A couple quick things about the headlight buckets themselves. There are right and left versions of them. They're not the same. And the way you can tell is that there's a pivot piece here which is only on one side. You see it's not on the other side. And that's where this brass pivot piece goes. That's where the lever, the actuating lever, attaches. So this is to the inside of the car and this is to the outside of the car, making this bucket a right side bucket. The headlights hit the elements head on, so it kind of makes sense that they'd be rust magnets. To restore mine, I soaked them in evapo rust, then painted them gray. Not exactly like the factory, but pretty close. I want to make sure that the wire harness on this side is routed up through the hole here before I put the motor in, because it'll just be a whole lot easier to do it now than later. There's also a stud here where all the ground wires attach, and I've cleaned that up to make sure that it's good and shiny. Now it's way easier to put the relay socket into the body first. So I'm resting the motor on something soft and then just working it in. I want to make sure that this insulator is on and then really carefully move the motor into position, avoiding the paint at all costs. And we'll put it through the metal here and then grab that little ring and put that on and align the holes so that we can just take the little bolts and screw them right in. And we'll just tighten things down here. Now we'll start to work the headlight wires through the grommet one at a time and pull them through. And we'll freshen up the contacts with some emery cloth here. We'll grab a brand new headlight connector since most of them don't survive being pulled out of cars. 
The yellow one goes on the top and the white wire on one side and the brown wire on the other. Now we'll just make sure that they're properly seated. Now we'll get the headlight bucket ready to put in the car. This is the top side here and you want to make sure that you have your pivots in on both sides before you put this in the car because the tolerances are really, really tight. Also make sure that you have the clip nuts or speed nuts in position because it'll be a lot easier to do them here now. Most importantly, make sure that the bronze pivot is in the right place. So I'll put that in. And there's a funky washer that goes on the other side, unlike any other washer on the car. Then just take a 10 millimeter wrench and tighten things down. This bolt here is the headlight bucket stop for when it's in the full up position. And I'll show you how to adjust that once everything is in the car. Remember on the bench we put the uh, bushings on the pivots here and the triangle shaped one is the one that goes on the inside of the car. So we just slip that into the bucket. And then on the other side, that's the straight up and down one, which goes on the outside of the headlight bucket. We'll slip that in. They're not tight at all. They just kind of go in pretty loosely. And then really, really carefully, <laughs> Again, with the fresh paint, we uh, work our way into the car and get everything lined up. This bracket goes on the inside, and you want to make sure that the flat part is towards the bottom. And then here on the other side, you can see the holes where this bracket lines up. And we're just going to leave everything finger tight for now because we'll probably need to move the bucket to get the gaps to align properly. So also make sure that the bracket is in between the nut and the edge of the stop bolt so that everything moves as it should. And I'm just going to test it a little bit, work it through and make sure it's smooth. Now for the next step, I want to make sure that the headlight motor is in the down position. So what I'm going to do is rewire it up to power like we did before where I'll take one lead to the red and another to the gray because that tells the motor go down. Now that the headlight's in the down position, I'm going to take the push rod with the uh, washer sides towards the motor and just test fit this in before I put the rubber thing through and everything else. I just want to make sure that, that it's all aligned. So I'll slip things through the slot here and put it on the brass bushing and then move it towards where the motor is you can see that the actuating bracket is loose on the motor. That's because what I want to do is I want to find the sweet spot for this, where the push rod is kind of centered over the actual bolt from the motor. Now that I have that, I'm going to hold the actuating bracket with my finger there just so it doesn't move, and then find the nut and put that on and tighten it, make sure that it's good and tight so it doesn't really move. And then we'll just test it. Yep, it's working. There it is, going up. Now I'll switch the wire over and it should go down. Yep, up and moving it again, down. I could do this all day. To adjust the stop, you use this bolt. You'll see that there is a little notch in there so that you can adjust it from the outside. And once everything is set, you uh, snug up the nut from the inside. Now, before we go any further, I really need to clean this rubber thing. Now that's the piece that sticks through the metal and the rod's gonna be through there. So I wanna make sure it's nice and clean. And I like to use WD-40 to clean rubber. It um, has a really great way of loosening up all the crud and making things look like new. Now there's an R imprinted on this, and uh, guess what that's for? <laughs> we'll take the push rod and now install it for real through the rubber, and then going over to the motor and then taking a C-clip to anchor it to the motor. Now we just have to take this rubber thing and stretch the lip over the edge of the metal tray. And now for the first time, we'll take the painted cover and put that on the bucket. We'll probably have to put this on and take it off a few times. I'll use all four screws to make sure that it's perfectly secure so I can check the gaps. Now I'm lowering the bucket by hand 
just by turning the back of the motor here because if there's any interference, I want to stop it before it has a chance to do any damage to my fresh paint. All right, so it's fully down, but I can see that the gap needs a little bit of work. It's not quite straight, so I'm going to grab the assembly, which is a lot easier to do when I'm not holding a camera, but I'll move things around a little bit and get everything to line up. And then once they're in a pretty good spot, I'll tighten them down a bit with the T-handle hex wrench here, but on the other side, I'm going to use a ratchet with a number five bit, hex bit, and just really carefully put it in there and snug them up, and then pull it out really carefully, like a game of operation. <laughs> now this gap is looking good at this point, and now what I have to do is check to see how it works on the other side by lowering the front hood, and we'll see how things kind of fit. And actually, this gap looks pretty good. I may need to finesse it a little bit more, but we're definitely in the ballpark. All right, time now to get the LED bulbs ready for installation. Okay, so here's the globe part of the package, and it's got some writing on the bottom, and it actually says top at the top, so you know which way it goes. I already put the bulb in, and that's the boot that's gonna go in over it on the car. So we'll need to put this into the little bucket that accepts the headlight itself, and then the trim ring. Now the top of the trim ring is where it says Hella, so we'll arrange that to the top of the bucket. And the way we know that is that the adjusting screws need to be at the 12 and nine o'clock position. So once we have that at the top, we know we're in the right place. And then we orient the bulb so that those little protrusions fit directly into the bucket. And we just tie the trim ring down to seal it all together. These are the new stainless steel adjusters and they have like a little channel that allows it to sit in the little slot on the bucket itself. I'll take these adjuster blocks and slip them into the headlight bucket and they just push right in. And the same thing on the uh, other side at the nine o'clock position. Now we'll take the actual assembly and the stainless steel screws and start threading them into the blocks. Now one thing that's different about these stainless steel adjuster screws is that they're not Phillips head. You use a hex wrench to tighten these in, but they work really, really well. And this spring here is a little bit of a pain, but a needle nose pliers allows you to hook it right up between the back of the bulb bucket and the back of the headlight bucket. Then we'll just plug the bulb in and put the boot over it to protect it from the elements. Yet another time now with the painted cover so that we can get the brows set up. The brows themselves are held in place with these little rubber stoppers, two on one side and one on the other. And also this piece of metal in the front. Um, sometimes it's bent forward, you gotta straighten it up, but that's also where the brow sits. The front edge has to sit over that metal. As the brow goes into position here, you can see that it's held by the rubber on the sides and by the metal in the front. Now once again, we'll lower the mechanism using the knob at the back of the motor slowly so we can check the gap between the headlight bucket and the brow. You wanna go really slow and make sure that we don't hurt the paint. By the way, you can only turn the motor counterclockwise, one direction. Otherwise, the knob spins off. And actually, it's looking pretty good. So I think, uh, I think we're good there. Okay, let's grab a new surround here. And these two are right and left sided. The inside always has a bit of a thicker edge to it. And that's how you can tell. The right side's a little thinner, but in either side, the adjustment screws are always at the 12 and nine positions. Much easier now to remove the brow in order to get this into place. You don't wanna fight it or possibly hurt it. We'll gently get everything into position. And these are held in place with two screws on either side and one at the top. Now for this top screw, you wanna make sure you're using the right type an oval or a flathead screw so that it doesn't mar the brow. And now the moment of truth. It works and everything looks good. Now I'll probably need to move things around a little bit and tweak the gap some more, but for now, I'm really happy with this. 
Okay, so the lights are in and working, and my Bumblebee is looking more and more like a car every day. If you want to see how to aim the headlights, I've got an episode for that. I'll just put a link over here so you can just click on it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. I also love it when you leave comments or questions. I try to get back to them right away. Thanks again to 914 Rubber for providing so many great parts for this build. And please consider joining my Patreon account and get a fun hat. Patreon.com slash Ian Carr. Thanks a lot for watching. Be safe and enjoy.